George Lyle was one of the most fruitful church planters in the early Americas. George was born into slavery as the property of Henry Sharp around 1750. I was born in Virginia. My father's name was Lyle. My mother's Nancy. I cannot be certain of much about them, so I went to several parts of America when young and at length resided in New Georgia. I was informed by both black and white people that my father was the only black person who knew the Lord in a spiritual way in that country. When Lyle was around 14, Henry Sharp moved to Georgia with his family and nine slaves. Henry Sharp's brother-in-law was Matthew Moore, a Baptist preacher. Soon, Moore started one of the earliest churches in that area. In 1773, George Lyle came to the Lord in Matthew Moore's church. I knew no other way at the time to hope for salvation, but only in the performance of good works. The Reverend Mr. Matthew Moore, one Sabbath afternoon, as I stood in curiosity to hear him, I was convinced that I was not in the way of heaven, but in the way of hell. This state I labored under for five or six months. The more I heard or read, and I found no way wherein I could escape the damnation of hell, only through the merits of dying Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Matthew Moore and the congregation recognized George's gifts. As a result, the mostly white church invited George Lyle to preach. The white brethren, seeing my endeavors and that the word of God seemed to be blessed, gave me a call at a quarterly meeting to preach before the congregation. Desiring to prove the sense I had of my obligation to God, I endeavored to instruct people out of my own color in the word of God. I request of my Lord and Master to give me a work. I did not care how mean it was, only to try to see how good I would do it. George Lyle had become the first licensed Baptist preacher of any color anywhere in America. Eventually he became ordained and was sent out by his congregation to preach to enslaved peoples in the area. In 1778, so that Lyle could preach more freely, his owner set him free. During this time, Lyle began to preach to enslaved people at Silver Bluff Plantation. Among others, Reverend Lyle baptized two men, David George and Andrew Bryan. These two men, along with George Lyle, went on to start two churches, which are the oldest African-American churches still in existence today. Reverend Lyle's former owner fought on the side of the British and died during the Revolutionary War. Later, his owner's descendants tried to re-enslave Reverend Lyle and threw him in jail. Reverend Lyle was only able to produce his freedom papers with the help of a British officer, Colonel Moses Kirkland. By January 1783, Reverend Law had made the decision to become a refugee, feeling it unsafe to remain in America. At the evacuation of the country, I was partially obligated to come to Jamaica as an indentured servant for money I owed him. He promising to be my friend in the country. Reverend Lyle, along with his wife, a daughter, and three sons arrived in Kingston, Jamaica as indentured servants. However, the Lyle family had left behind them a lasting work in Savannah, Georgia area that is still in existence today. Reverend Lyle arrived in Jamaica as an indentured servant, but also as an experienced evangelist, pastor, and church planter. I was landed at Kingston, and by the Colonel's recommendation to General Campbell, the governor of the island, I was employed by him two years, and on his leaving the island, he gave me a written certificate under his own hand of my good behavior. As soon as I had settled Colonel Kirkland's demand on me, I had a certificate of my freedom. My occupation is a former, but as the seasons in this part of the country are uncertain, I also kept a team of horses and wagons with the assistance of my sons and by his way of life have I gained the goodwill of the public. It was against the law to preach to enslaved peoples in the British Empire and Reverend Lyle was persecuted by government officials and established churches as well. Lyle was placed in jail for sedition. 
Reverend Lyle had to allow authorities to inspect every prayer and sermon, and no slave was allowed to attend church without the permission of their owner. I began about September 1784 to preach in Kingston in a small private house to a good, smart congregation. I formed a church with four brethren from America beside myself. The preaching took very good effect with the poor sort, especially the saved. The people at first persecuted us both at meetings and baptisms, but God be praised, they seldom interrupt us now. We have together with well-wishers and followers in different parts of the country about 1,500 people. We receive none into the church without a few lines from their owners of their good behavior towards them and religion. I preach, baptize, administer the Lord's Supper, and travel from one place to another to publish the gospel and to settle church affairs, all freely. I received nothing for my services. When it came time to build a church building, the enslaved populations could not afford it. Lyle ended up in prison a second time for three years for inability to pay the church debt. During this time, he reached out to the British Baptists in England for financial help. There is no Baptist church in this country but ours. We have purchased a piece of land and on it have begun a meeting house. The chief part of our congregation are slaves, and their owners allow them, in common, but three or four bits per week for allowance to feed themselves. Out of so small a sum, we cannot expect anything. If we did, it would soon bring a scandal upon religion. Due to the financial banking of the British Baptist, the church building was completed and several other properties were also acquired. The movement Reverend Lau initiated had then become supported by the same group that sent William Carey to India. In 1813, 50 years after George Lyle had arrived in Jamaica, the first British Baptist missionaries arrived in Jamaica. They found that persecution had become so severe that many congregations had not had regular leadership for many years. It was hoped that the white pastors would have more freedom than the black ones. However, most British missionaries lasted an average of three years and also experienced severe persecution. Nevertheless, a process moving leadership to the white ministries began. It turned out to be an unfortunate backwards trend. Eventually, the enslaved people sent out missionaries to Sierra Leone, Malawi, Nova Scotia, the British West Indies, and several West African countries. Enslaved Jamaicans, despite persecution, lack of money, lack of finances, and a lack of freedom, still sent out their own missionaries. Reverend Lyle was not initially sent out by a missions agency or a church. He went to Jamaica as a refugee. Lyle arrived in Jamaica 10 years before William Carey, who is usually called the father of modern missions, began his work in India. Also, Reverend Lyle began his work in Jamaica almost 30 years before America sent out Adoniram Judson usually called America's first missionary. By 1814, it was estimated that there were 8,000 Baptists in Jamaica, all the result of the siege of George Lyle's ministry. George Lyle died in Jamaica around 1825. Reverend Lyle may have begun his life as an enslaved person and gone to Jamaica as a refugee, but he finished his life as a great Christian pioneer. George Lyle is truly one of the greatest Christian pioneers from America of any race or color.